Hi, Dr. Pelto here. Uh, today we're going to talk about kissing corns, a painful love affair on the foot. So the kissing corns are these uh, little things that happen between the toes. So stay tuned. So let's get into this. Uh, a kissing corn, do you like this little piece of corn we put right here, uh, right in between the toes? It usually happens between the fourth and the fifth toes. And what happens is these bones, they rub against each other and they cause this thing. So let me show you some pictures here, what it looks like. So you might have this. You're going to know if you have this because it's going to hurt. This is an example. Uh, once again, they're all examples between the fourth and fifth toes right here on the fifth toe. Right. And the problem with this is this can develop into a wound or an ulcer. This can be specifically uh, bad for someone that um, is a diabetic or has poor blood flow. Uh, another example of one of these. Uh, and this white is actually a callus that's on that area. And then as you go over here, this one actually looks like it may be elevated. It may even have a cyst under this one right here. Uh, here's another one on the side of the toe, uh, another one on the side of the toe. And it can be on the side of the fourth toe or the side of the fifth toe. But normally it's because the two bones are rubbing against each other. And so it's obvious, but the thing that makes this thing really bad is having a shoe that's really tight. So I'm going to go over this evaluator, and then I'm going to show you some other pictures. The, the main problem I think that people make with this is that they do some of the least effective treatments. So for example, I think some of the least effective are using like a cream or something called Glide that just reduces um, the, uh, the friction between the toes. Uh, you can also do a pumice stone, but really between the toes, how do you put a pumice stone between there? Because a the pumice stone is really big. You could try a file maybe. Uh, I have patients that try different toe spacers. They help a little bit, but unless you get that hard skin off, either pads or toe spacers really won't work. Uh, if something is really recurrent, you can do something called Leneva. This is a new type of a treatment. It, it actually, it's, it's very similar to the stuff that you inject like fillers in your face. You can do fillers in the foot. Uh, not very common for this. Then we'll, we'll talk a little bit more. I'll show you examples of some of the surgery. I really think the things that's most effective is wearing a wider shoe and then trimming that callus off. Now, once again, you should not trim this on your own, even though they do sell these razor blades on Amazon, but they're selling everything on Amazon these days. But uh, trimming the callus, I think, is the mainstay. If you do not get that callus off of there, you are not going to feel better. So first getting the callus then doing a wider shoe, I think is easier. Why do I think a wider shoe is easier? I, I basically think a wider shoe is easier because you just put the thing on. If you have to put toe spacers or pads on every time, no one's going to do that long term. Okay. So let me show you some other pictures. These are some examples. Uh, let me show you. So first thing, these are these foam. These kind of have a, a, a double density pad. Uh, you can get these on, on Amazon or anywhere else. They're different spacers between the toes. These help. The problem with these is they tend to fall off. Uh, that's why I like these other ones. These have a little elastic around them. And so basically it's an elastic pad and it has this little gel thing on in the inside. Uh, another example is a toe cap or a toe sleeve. All these can be found. There's different types. I like these because they stay on a little bit better. Uh, once again, a pumice is an option, but how do you fit that between your fourth and fifth toes? Doesn't really work that well. Uh, and then lastly, uh, this is what I think works best is actually taking a razor blade and uh, trimming it down. Once again, do not do this, especially if you're diabetic. Do not do this. Don't, don't, don't. Okay. You're looking to ca cause yourself a problem. Um, something I didn't mention, some people have some athlete's foot between here too. So you can kind of get that this can be mistaken for athlete's foot. And then I want to show the difference between a wide shoe and a traditional shoe. So a traditional shoe squeezes your toes. You see how the toes are squeezed here? And this is a, a an, we call it anatomic shoe. So I'm going to put a little link underneath this video where um, you can get my shoe buying guide where I talk about anatomic shoes. There's a couple of good brands. I like Ultra, Topo, Lems. This is an example of a Lem uh, type of a shoe. So wearing an anatomic shoe would help it not come back. It's not going to get rid of the actual callus that you have. And then here's an example of a urea cream. It doesn't need to be any special one. Urea is going to uh, break down some of that tissue, uh, some of the hard callus if you can't trim it down yourself. Do not use, please, do not use acid pads because acid pads, if you use them too many times, they can cause sores or wounds. And that's the main reason why we treat this because we don't want uh, to get sores or wounds. Uh, I'm showing you an example of the fourth and fifth toes. And this little white thing, uh, this is actually a piece of metal that I put on the callus so I can show my patients. I say, well, if this is where your callus is, it's because this toe is rubbing against this toe. That's why you have it. Another example right here, this toe is rubbing against this toe. So just quickly, depending on the type of uh, problem, if the main problem is the fourth is the fourth toe, 
many times I can make a little incision on top and just take a rasp and rasp it down. Rasp is kind of like a file. If it's at the tip, I can I can make a little incision. I can go right through the tip and rasp down any any prominent bones that are there. Uh, this is a, another example. Uh, one, the, the simple uh, rasping of the bone. It's not always this bone right here. This is the one I'm pointing to. This is the base. It's usually further up, but there is a certain one that actually comes from the rubbing of these two bones together. Uh, this can many times be called a soft corn. It's deeper inside. So there's kind of a funny, a funny treatment that you can do for this. Basically what you do is you take the head of the bone off, this one, and shave this one down, and then you sew the toes together. Do you see that? So what you do is you take a little marker and you mark here and you push the toes together and then you cut out that skin and then you sew the skin together. And that's how you, that's you do, that's how you kind of deal with it. So uh, those are some of the treatments uh, for this. Uh, another, this is an example of how you take the bone out. Basically you just take the bone out and that um, helps it to not rub anymore. If there's no bone, there is no rubbing. So once again, I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, if you have any other uh, questions, please let me know. Uh, about this, just type them underneath. If you have this, if you have other things that have worked that I don't know about, let me know. Okay, thanks guys. Hey guys, thank you for watching Healthy Living. You're gonna find a few links here I'd like you to click. One is to subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Uh, also, you can learn more. There are some videos here you can see.